Good afternoon. This is Albert Einstein, here at the Louvre Museum in Paris with Queen Elizabeth II of Great Britain. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure, I am sure. Our purpose here today is to compare and contrast qualitative versus quantitative research. As a leader and reader of people for 60 years, we will speak for the qualitative side. And as the ultimate scientist and rationalist, I will be the quintessential quantitativist, if that's even a word. As a gentleman, I will allow Queen Elizabeth to start the debate. Thank you Professor Einstein, and thank you for letting us choose the location for our discussion, surrounded by works of art in this wonderful museum in the heart of Paris. This setting illustrates two of the fundamental features of qualitative research. First, that the research involves looking at qualities that cannot be easily quantified, and second that the researcher herself becomes immersed in the situation being studied. Your Majesty, that is certainly different from my quantitative approach. I like my variables to be measurable in some commonly accepted fashion, and the quantitative methodology stresses that the observer should be dispassionate, objective, and neutral. A quantitative researcher strives not to allow himself to influence or be influenced by whatever he is researching. You see, Your Grace, in quantitative research we clearly set out our premises and hypotheses before we start and determine exactly what measurements we will make and exactly how we will make them. Oh my, Albert, you quantitative researchers are so decisive and sure of yourselves. In qualitative research one does not assume nearly so much before one starts. One certainly has a plan for gathering data, but one is free to make personal observations and interpretations, and study participants are asked about their experience, not simply poked and prodded and measured with standardized and calibrated scientific instruments. One then uses inductive reasoning to look for themes and patterns in one's observations relevant to the research problem. Only after identifying such themes and patterns does one begin using deductive tools and reasoning to further analyze the data. Pardon me Elizabeth, but that is absurd. With all due respect, quantitative research involves using inductive reasoning only before the start of the project to formulate theories and postulate hypotheses. Once the research starts, it is all about gathering predetermined data and using deductive reasoning and logic to support or refute the hypothesis under scrutiny. Your qualitative approach sounds like a recipe for chaos. I thought you were a monarchist, not an anarchist. Relax Al, and try not to get your knickers in a twist. Qualitative research may seem a wee bit uncontrolled and loosey-goosey to you, but you must admit that quantitative research can sometimes feel like being strapped in a straitjacket locked in a rubber room. Not that one would know what that feels like, but you get one's point. Reality is complicated and messy, and research methodology needs to take that into account. Liz Baby. You make some very strong points, you've got a good head on your shoulders under that crown. I propose that we meet halfway and agree that there is a role for both quantitative and qualitative research methodologies, perhaps even in the same study. By synergistically combining both approaches in a mixed method design, the results of the whole research project might very well be greater than the sum of its parts. Shall we dance? Oh Al, one thought you would never ask. Say Al, do you think one is ready for the follies bear share?